Good morning and welcome to our marketing coffee break. Today I want to talk to you about a huge issue a friend of a friend had on the Etsy platform and how it impacted her business terribly. And what I found out when I contacted Etsy about this issue in general, not about the specific person's issue, but the issue in general. I know Etsy is a very popular program, especially for a lot of people who make some handmade individual items, very creative items. And because it is a marketplace and a lot of people can go to Etsy and find a lot of different products, it can be pretty popular. It's kind of like Amazon in that way, where you can go one place and find a bunch of what you need. So there are benefits to platforms like that, and I don't want to minimize those benefits at all. This friend of a friend who was posting some questions when she ran into problems and they reached out to me to see if I could, you know, help provide some advice. What happened was she had been staying somewhere else. I think maybe one of her relatives or something. She had gone to visit for about a week and suddenly when she logs into Etsy after she's back home to um, add some more items because she had been doing some work on the site, she was locked out and got a message, told her that her account was basically closed and unavailable. Mind you, she does thousands and thousands of dollars a month of jobs in Etsy. And how she had it set up, all of the sales information was still in Etsy. And so she had some clients that she was in the middle of doing their job or, you know, getting ready to do it. And so she had logged into Etsy to also go, you know, pull that information. She knew the sales were sitting there. She needed to pull the information, what exactly did they need, and, you know, maybe their shipping information, all of this type of data that you just need when you're doing any kind of e-commerce online business, you need that data to complete your orders. And she had access to none of that. No access to her historical sales figures, and she had been using the platform for quite a while. No access to those orders that were in process so that she could complete them. No access to the customer list. All of it suddenly, basically kind of overnight, unavailable. What Etsy told her was that to them what they saw suspicious activity her account being logged into from the same IP address that some other account or accounts that they had flagged had logged into. So basically how they were viewing it was one person owned more than one store and for some reason they had flagged these other stores and therefore flagged her account also and shut it down. She did not find out what these other accounts were flagged for, which is interesting considering that in their eyes, they were assuming that all of these accounts were hers, but they wouldn't tell her any information. So she doesn't know what they were flagged for. She has no access to her own business that she has built over the years, no access to her customer list, no access to her orders in process. Obviously, you can see how this would have such a huge negative impact on her business. Basically, her business has kind of ground to a halt and shut down because of this. And at this point, she's going to have to rebuild everything from scratch. She's going to have to have a new store, online store, online site, whether that, you know, she tries to go the Etsy route again or she goes to some other third party platform or she tries to build her own website. So starting all of that from scratch and she's going to have to 
try to somehow regenerate a customer list. She didn't have an outside email list set up, which was part of the problem. She does have like a Facebook account, but not all of her customers are necessarily on there. So a few things I wanna discuss with you about my recommendations right after I tell you what I found out when I contacted Etsy. So I like to do art, obviously some of it, if you're viewing my video here, you can see some of it on the wall behind me in different stages of done. That one has been sitting there for quite a bit and it's not finished yet. And I had considered Etsy as a supplement if I decide to start promoting some of my artwork, whether that's through original artwork or, you know, prints or cards, uh, you know, thank you cards, something like that. Because I know it's a kind of like a third party marketplace, I had been considering Etsy as well. So I contacted Etsy and asked them a general question. You know, I said a friend of a friend had this issue happen. Her account got shut because they told her she was using the same IP address as someone else who, whose account got closed. In my case, we have a beach vacation property. We don't spend a lot of time there ourselves. Obviously, it is a um, rental property that's the only way we can have it is by renting it out, and it's a great way to be able to kind of achieve that kind of dream to rent it out. We have professional property managers that handle it. We go, you know, a few times a year when we can. Obviously, this rental property is used by a lot of other people. I do not know who all of these people are. They rent it. It's a property that sleeps up to 16 people, so usually it's a very large family or maybe a couple of families that get together and rent it, and a lot of times they're renting it for a long weekend or even a week. Knowing, kind of like I do, that a lot of people who run their own company still work while they're on vacation, at least a little bit, my concern is a lot of these people may have an Etsy shop, and they're logging into Etsy while they're there on the IP address of the vacation property. Obviously, when I go, I'm logging in through that same IP address because it's all on the same router and Wi-Fi. My concern was I could run into a problem like this friend of a friend did. Maybe someone else who stays there gets their Etsy shop banned, and it shows that they were on my IP address at some point. If I have an Etsy shop then and I visit Etsy through that same IP address, is my shop going to then get banned? They sent me back a kind of generic answer. It, it wasn't just cut and paste, but it was basically, oh, we look at several factors before deciding to ban a store. And yes, the same IP address used can be one of them, but we look at many factors. So it didn't really answer my question, which asked how I could really make sure that nothing like that could happen to me if I do move forward and open an Etsy store for my artwork. Basically what it told me is that yes, my store could also be closed down. Like this friend of a friend, I could lose, she, she was doing, she said, you know, five digits, so 10,000 or more a month on her Etsy store and she has completely lost it now. So that made me pause and you know, really think, my plan was never to have Etsy as the sole home of my artwork, but it made me reconsider, do I even want it on there at all? While I'm thinking through that process, I have a few tips for you if you've ever used any, any type of third party platform, I don't care whether it's Etsy, whether it's um, Squarespace and Wix are third-party websites, whether you maybe only sell through you know, Facebook or some other social media, how you have it set up, your orders come through there, and you don't really have a website or anything, or maybe Amazon, maybe Amazon's the only place you sell. Again, these are all third-party vendors that are owned by the other company, 
those companies can enforce their rules when and how they want, and they can change their rules when they need to, and then you have to comply, and if you don't, you can run into a problem such as, you know, getting your account closed. My recommendations are always, always, always get people off of those third-party platforms and into your own things that you own. So I'm not saying don't use those platforms. But for instance, social media, Facebook. I have followers on Facebook. I always try to offer things that encourage them to either sign up for my email list where they get, you know, my monthly newsletter or when I post a new blog post that has great marketing information. Or I have them visit my website where they can sign up for one of, you know, many things on the website. My plan, if I do move forward with putting some of my art on Etsy, will still always be using it kind of as an avenue to get the people into my own email list or move them into my own store on my own website platform. Especially when you relate back, not to Etsy, but to Facebook, how they have made and announced some major changes this week. A lot of companies that I work with, my clients that I'm working with right now, a lot of them have suddenly scrambled and they're like, you know, what is this? The whole focus of Facebook now is on groups and some of them don't even have a group. And so they're kind of scrambling now. Do I have to rethink my whole strategy? What do I have to do? Just another example of one of these third party sites that you don't own is now kind of dictating your new strategy. So it can be relatively easy to put a plan in place and overcome any of these. The whole thing is you need to think through and have a solid strategy to make sure that you're capturing the information you need from these platforms, you're getting people into your own platform, and especially if you're selling on any of these platforms and it's your only avenue of selling, you need your customer list, also, um, in a standard email program like MailChimp, one of my favorites, where you can do blast emails, but you also need a list where you can contact them through a traditional email method like, you know, Outlook or your email provider you use or Gmail if that's what you're using for your business. Both places, and to do that, you have to get them out of Etsy or whatever the third party site is. And more importantly, some method to capture all of the order information that you need. That might be implementing Zapier to drop it all into a spreadsheet or something like that. The problem will still occur if your Etsy shop like this friend of a friend doing, you know, 10,000 or more a month of business. Etsy processes the payments, and so if they close your store, you may still be working on these different orders, but no way to capture your payment. So you need to consider that as well, which is why you need your customer's information. The other problem can come in once Etsy closes your store, they refund all those people. Those people may decide they don't want that order anymore, and you've been putting in work on it. That's part of the risk of doing business solely through a third party provider that you need to consider. But at least if you have the full order information in your own, you know, a spreadsheet or a database or something, you at least have the opportunity to contact those customers and say, you know, hey, yeah, there was a problem with Etsy, but I'm still working on your order. Let's make other payment arrangements if you, if you still want your order. My recommended platform, anytime, any website is always WordPress on your own hosting. And I happen to like Bluehost hosting. I'm going to drop a link down in the comments. WordPress is a free open source website and blog platform. And because it is open source, it can be extended quite, quite extensively through plugins and other things that other vendors have made to interact with it. And then if you're going to sell online, WooCommerce 
e-commerce solution for WordPress. It is also free and open source. And again, that gives it a lot of ability to extend. Those two are my standard for websites, whether you're going to do just a website with a blog or if you're going to add the e-commerce component. And then MailChimp is my preferred platform for blast emails like email automation drips and sending out an email newsletter and those types of things. I'll also put a link to that down below. The great thing is um, MailChimp does have a, a free program until you hit a certain level and pretty much all of their services are available even on that free that free um, basis. They just have a limit on the number of contacts you can put in there before you have to start paying. And again, WooCommerce, that plugin itself is free. WordPress itself is free. You do have to pay hosting. If you don't know a lot about websites or you want a professionally designed website, you will probably need to hire a designer or developer to assist you in that. But it is easy to maintain even if you don't want to build it yourself. You can still learn how to add posts, add pages, or add products if you go the e-commerce route. So just one of those things I wanted to bring up with this huge problem that my friend of a friend, you know, she has lost her whole business. We're talking over $100,000 a year business and it is all gone and she is starting from scratch and I feel horrible for her. I've reached out and offered, you know, my services and a few uh, resources, you know, I told her I recommend this route, WordPress plus WooCommerce, use MailChimp, and um, hopefully she can get back up and running. She is so devastated, though, that that kind of just the emotion and, and depression behind what happened can just kind of set you back when you're an entrepreneur. So. We're doing everything we can to try to keep her spirits up and let her know, hey, you know, you did it once. You can do it again. You have you do have emails from Etsy each time somebody bought. And yeah, going back through those and trying to capture some client information can be a pain in the butt. But you can also hire a VA to do it pretty cheap. You know, there's there's ways we can get around this and 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 get you out of this problem. So let's focus on the positive steps that we can help you take moving forward. And again, go back to using Etsy if they'll let you reopen an account and that's what you want to do. But we need to put in place steps to get the clients off of Etsy, get their info off of Etsy and put it into platforms that you have ownership and control over. So just curious if you've ever experienced anything like this yourself. Drop me a comment and um, let me know because I'd be interested to hear your stories as well. And if you want a little bit more information on how you can prevent things like this, feel free to drop your question below and I will answer those as well to the best of my ability and help hopefully prevent you from losing any business for your entrepreneurial journey. This has been Vicki Wu and I will see you next week at our marketing coffee break.